Hi there, welcome to this build of a 1950s futuristic looking flying wing. Now this is the Ion designed by Pete Fisher and I think he designed it in 1957. Now you can see in the previous videos we've really cracked on with this and we've got to a point where the wing is more or less complete We've got the engine, a PAW diesel 5.5, so that's 0.55 cc. We've got that mounted, and there's a whopping eight degrees of down thrust on that. And we've got this single leg here, just to uh, provide a little bit of a nose wheel for when it's coming into land. Now, to finish off the classic Peter Fisher look, the futuristic look of this, we're gonna get the fuselage done in this video and I'm really excited to get this done because the fuselage in many respects is uh, very characteristic of Peter Fisher's uh, designs. So I will show you how we're going to do this. We've, we've got a, we're working from a, a great plan here I got from Derek Scott's website. If you have a look in the description below there'll be a link to it. But on here there's uh, enough information of how we're going to do the fuselage and I've got a copy here and we'll have a look at that now. Okay so this is what we get on the plan. We get a plan view looking down on top of the fuselage which is great because we can use that to put on top of the fuselage here and mark where the fuselage is going to go. It also gives us the width of the formers we're going to be using 116 sides and 116 cross pieces, so that's 1.6 mil. So we've got that information there. We've also got a side elevation of the fuselage. Now I've cut out what is essentially the wing and that leaves us with the fuselage shape. And then we've got the fin on top of that. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to use these two bits of information to put the cross formers on top of the fuselage in the correct location. And we, as I said, we're going to take the width of the formers and now we can take the height of the formers. So if we get all these in place, we can then look at doing the fuselage sides. And that'll be interesting because we need to make them a really tight fit around this curve here. I don't want to be filling it with filler or glue or anything. I want to try and get them really nice and tight. And the fuselage sides come really quite tight into these engine bearers and we're going to put some balsa to pack that out so that they actually glue onto those engine bearers and provide some strength and resilience to that because it's quite weak at the moment. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is take off the engine because I don't want to be working on this with the engine and the prop in the way but also I don't want to get dust and dirt inside this engine. Well I've been getting on with this quite well and you can see here I've now got all of the formers in that I need for the fuselage and I've as I said I've measured these this information off the plans and these seem to have gone in quite nicely and I've used just a little piece of balsa you can see there just to give them a little bit more strength before I put the fuselage sides on but it's interesting that it, the um, putting these formers in and using this alongside to get the right location has shown me that actually I've uh, done the beach engine bearers slightly too long. I don't know where that shows up there. They should be finishing here. And I've put the engine a little bit too far forward. I think when I mounted the engine, I was taking it off the front, the very front point of the, the wing. And I wasn't accounting for the fact that that would be beveled or, or sanded down a little bit. But anyway, the, the upshot of it is I'm going to move the engine a little bit. So rather than having it there, I'm going to move it back only about five or it's not even 10 mil, I don't think. What is it? I'm moving it back about six and a half mil. So, and I think that'll be quite useful. So I need to cut off these fronts. 
be quite useful having the engine further back for the balance because I think this is potentially going to be nose heavy or could be if we were not careful so we'll lose a little bit of weight on the bearers and we'll move the engine back towards the CG it's an easy fix uh, I, I don't know how I measured that wrong really but it's uh, it doesn't matter we've still got this right angle on these bearers now this I haven't glued in yet this this former here and I think I'm going to angle that back a little bit so the air from the engine as it's running will take any oil and fuel up and out of the engine bay area rather than down and underneath because I'm going to have a hatch underneath and as I found on my tomboy build where I had a hatch underneath if you're not careful you'll get oil going into that on the underside so I'm going to do that and you can see I've got fuel pipe coming out here so this pipe can go through that uh, former there I've got a, a breather and a filler and if I turn this over we can see I've got a 10 mil tank just fitted in there now it's a, a little bit way back from the engine so we're we're talking of what about uh, about four inches 100 mil back but I don't think that's going to be a problem these are great engines it will draw that fuel up without any problem and I have tested this in the test stand and checked that it will run okay and that this tank is a good size now this tank is a 10 cc tank now when I finish this video I'm going to put together a video which will be the next one just showing the engine running with this tank and showing how long I get from a 10 cc tank so I think that is quite a good solution that tank now the other option was to put the tank in here between the bearers which the 10 cc wouldn't fit it's it's too wide to go through the bearers I didn't want to trim them down and I could have put a seven seven and a half cc tank in but I would have had to cut out quite a lot here and I would have had to put this still a, a decent way back to get the uh, fuel pipe in a, in a good position so I think what I've done is probably a good solution so now moving on to the fuselage I've cut a piece of balsa which has got essentially I, I started off by putting the profile from the side elevation off the plan onto this and cutting this out roughly to uh, to just show the outline of where the wing goes and I say it was very rough I've now sanded this and profiled it so that this I just I'll just turn this round a little bit this now fits nice and snugly against those formers and around the front of the wing there so we don't need to use any filler to fill gaps or very very little I don't think we'll need any at all so we've got the shape of that and now we need to think about producing the shape of the fuselage and if I turn this back round again what I'm going to do is just take my pencil now because I know these forms are the right height and I'm going to go along and I'm just going to mark the top of these formers and then and the front of the engine bearers and then I'm going to use this again to make sure I get the right top profile for this uh, this side of this fuselage and then we'll need to create or make another side for that side so we've got two fuselage sides that draw in like this and then hopefully we can get those glued on there will be a little bit of filling around the side here just a small amount to make sure that these fuselage sides are nicely secured onto these beach engine bearers not only to make the fuselage more solid but also to give some strength to the engine bearers or at least some uh, resilience to them stop them flexing and, and moving so I will get this fuselage side to shape and then I can get that other one done and we'll have a look at getting these fitted there we go I thought I'd just quickly show you how I've marked this up ready to cut out that fuselage side 
still got these to trim off but you can see where it, it finishes there and there's a little step down here from this nose because we're going to have some sheeting just on top of there up into the uh, the window for the uh, the cockpit but anyway I'll get on now get this side and the other side finished right as you can see I've been cracking on with this now and we've got the fuselage sides glued in place and nicely sanded nicely profiled initially they were a little bit oversized by design and I just took a, a plane to them and just carefully took them down to the top of these formers or almost and then just sanded them to get that finished profile I've put in a little bit of packing here just to strengthen where the uh, the engine bearers go onto the sides and I'm ready now to start sheeting it and I've prepared a couple of pieces of sheeting and this is a piece for the top and we can see it's got cross grain and then at this bit at the front which forms part of the cabin we've got a grain in a different direction if this was cross grain grain it'd be very weak at the tip here so that's it's shown like this on the plan so I've just just copied the plan really and I've joined this together just using CA and you can see here how I've done that right we've got our pieces of balsa to sheet the top of the fuselage and we're going to join these together so we've got cross grain and I think that'll be better it'll certainly go on better than um, longitudinal grain so the way we're going to stick this together is we're just going to hold them together on a piece of plastic like this now we could tape them together but I find just holding them sufficient we just run a little bit of thin CA along that give that a wipe to take off the excess and just give that a second for our CA to, uh, to go off and once that's gone off I'll just take one of my sanding sticks and just give that a light sand and, uh, and then we've got that done now I will probably use the underside to go on the top because that's the flatter side and it, it'll look probably the nicest so but to be honest there shouldn't be much in it particularly if we give it a light uh, a light sand so again we just hold them together nice and tight a little bit of uh, thin CA run onto that and if we've got time just wipe off the excess like I say you can hold these together with tape but I find just small pieces it's enough just to hold it like that so I've got that and that's ready to go on there I will CA that on in a bit and and then get a very sharp scalpel and trim the sides and sand that I've got a bit here which I've done for the nose just to cover that like that and then there will be a fin that needs to go on now the fin I probably won't do until I've actually got it covered I'll do it right at the very end if I do it now it's just going to be a real uh, weakness really uh, you know if I want to turn the whole thing over and work on the servos which I'll do be doing soon then you know I'm, I'm likely going to damage it so I, I, I'll just leave leave that off I've got it to shape I've also done a little bit of sheeting on the underside here haven't um, glued that in I've just got it in place and uh, and that's ready to be glued in just to fill in that gap but what I want to do before I start putting in this sheeting is to actually um, fuel proof around the inside here and around in this bay here a little bit I, I won't do the actual engine bay just yet but I've got a hole there where the fuel pipe is going to be going through and I just don't want any fuel or oil seeping through there and then soaking into the wood here so I think just to, to seal that a little bit and I've also got gaps that are going to be on the underside here from the, um, the, the, the nose leg and oil could soak in there as well or, or could yeah could soak in so just to give it a little bit of uh, protection really so I'm going to do the fuel proofing now and I would also fuel proof on the underside of these 
just so that uh, when I stick them down that's fuel proofed as well. And I'm going to be using my 30 minute zap epoxy just thin down a little bit with 95% um, uh, alcohol and I'm not going to be using much fuel proofing just a light coating I don't want to add too much weight at this stage. Well I've now got the fuselage more or less finished and I'm really pleased with the way this is starting to look and we're starting to get that futuristic Peter Fisher look you can see with this bar coming down the center of that kind of angled windscreen I, I just love this kind of design and we've got just the engine just placed in there with the shortened bearers still need a little bit of uh, a little bit of sanding and profiling but it's done for now this will get done right at the end just finishing off we've got the uh, the sheeting on the underside I think we've looked at that already and um, oh, the only thing we've got to do as I said earlier is or I think I said earlier we've got the fin and the fin will go on there like that so if I just hold that in place you can see what this is going to look like and you, you really do get an idea of how this finished wing is going to be but as I said there's absolutely no point in sticking this on now because I'll only break it off when I uh, turn it upside down to do the servos or the, the radio hatch but I am really pleased with this now and I just can't wait to get it finished or at least to start covering it and seeing it getting a little bit of colour I haven't talked much about the, the covering, but I think I'm going to be putting Doculam and uh, a Japanese Asuka tissue just the same way that I've done on, on previous builds like the Diamond Demon and the, uh, the Quaker, the, 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 the smaller version of the Quaker, the Quiver. So, but that is looking lovely. So anyway, I hope, I hope you can see why I'm so excited about this. And um, I'm going to draw this video to a close now. And please come back and see how we get on in the next stage of this build, which I'm just thinking is probably going to be getting the ends of the wings done with the uh, servos mounted. And um, yeah, the servos mounted. We've got the fins to do for the ends. And then we're more or less... Oh, and then, of course, after that, the next video will probably be installing the, the hatch underneath and the radio gear. I need to start giving that some thought. But anyway, I'll draw this to a close now. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, like I say, come back and see how we get on in pulling together this lovely, iconic 1950s ion.